We came to Edgartown to live in 1920, took over the Gazette, and uh, it was a, on the second story of a building which then stood where the Harborside Liquor Store was until later. It was a different building, but it was, looked much the same. And it was pretty primitive. It was uh, all the type was handset, and the press was bound together by wire where it was broken. So a year later, moved to a building built about 1760, next to where the Gazette is now, but that, that building was very small and has since been torn down, and the Gazette has been in its present quarters since 1939. When you first came to the, to the Gazette, did you have a, a vision of how you wanted it to be? No. I was, of course, from infancy familiar with the vineyard and in love with the vineyard, and I think that was just a case of my wife, too. She had only been to the vineyard a couple of times, but she loved it, too. But I don't think I consciously related uh, that background to work on the Gazette. It was just uh, a challenge as to what we would find and what we would try to do. I've always felt that it would be a great mistake to, for anybody to approach a local newspaper with ideas that they wanted to apply. The, the thing to do would be to discover the needs, to discover the characteristics and what the local newspaper should represent. Of course, we were aware of the character of the island as a summer resort, and we knew about its economy based at least 50% in fishing, and maybe not quite 50% in uh, the summer people, and the balance in uh, agriculture of one sort or another. There was a lot of small-scale farming. I think we were open-minded as to reporting everything that was of island interest. And I think that evolved it was rather than the result of any formal decisions. The whole thing was very flexible and dynamic. And we worked such long hours that we had little time to think about theories. It was mostly were practical decisions from week to week. And so how many people were involved in the Gazette at that point? Well, the whole staff consisted of Mr. Marchant, who was our predecessor as editor, and uh, an older girl, uh, Leona St. Pierre, and uh, Mr. Marchant's daughter, Elizabeth, who was somewhat younger. And then we soon added a pressman or a compositor whose name was Ezekiel Matthews, and he was a Lancashireman, came from England. And he came into the office, I remember, and he saw the two girls working at the type cases. And he said, aye, so you have female comps here. So we did, we had female comps. And that was rock bottom, and we went on from there. Of course, there were two of us, but it was many years before we had another reporter. Well, it wasn't either, because Joe Allen came to the island, that was 1924. And he stayed, and he never stopped contributing to the Gazette, really, until his death a year or so ago, yeah. all those years. This all sounds so pompous and, uh, and deliberate, and it wasn't that way. It was all just from day to day and spontaneous. We soon got the idea of following the seasons of the year. There would be the uh, period of summer when the summer people came, and um, so many of the men who owned boats would become boatmen and uh, take parties out or lease their boats to summer people for the summer. Then would come the fall, it would be the harvest of such agriculture as there was, and the agricultural fair, and some of the exhibits were marvelous, the vegetables that were grown, and the livestock, it was, it was quite a period. Then as the fall came on, there'd be the cranberries and the wild grapes, and then in winter, the fishermen would go out uh, maybe hand lining for cod or on the island fishing for eels, spearing eels through the ice, if there was ice. And they would harvest ice from the ponds to store in the ice houses to be sold in the summer, used in the summer. Then with the spring, they'd come to planting again. They used to plant quite early, earlier than they do now, I think and so on into the summer. Then the boats which had been uh, hand lining in the winter would fit for sword fishing. The natural world you know, and the role it's played in Gazette articles, it's always very present in the mm -hmm. editorials. It, it seems like it's both a combination of the fact that you really enjoy the natural mm -hmm. world here 
and that you're trying to help people value mm -hmm. it. Yes, that, that's true. That's been always been a major policy of the Gazette because the natural resources of the island are so different, so outstanding, that if they could be preserved, that's the kind of capital which renews itself every year, every growing season, and with every generation it goes on and on, providing it isn't abused, providing that the uh, harbors and ponds are not polluted and that the land isn't too much built up or abused.